Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to use uh, GoPro reframing effect inside of Premiere. So you can download this from their website. There's, If you go down on the website, you'll see that there's the GoPro reframing link. We'll click on that, download it, and then once you go into Premiere, you'll find the preset. Okay, so we're going to get started here. As you see, I have the GoPro player open, and I have my clips from yesterday's surf session. And I went through my clips, and I actually uh, tagged them with the little colors, so I know that uh, this one's a green one. It's, it's going to be a good clip. So when I double-click it, since I've already used uh GoPro player as a default you see it it's it's go ahead and it's opening in GoPro player while you're in GoPro player you can see you can move the camera around on a 360 access much like Google Earth you can zoom out you can zoom in you can reframe you can hear my dog whining in the background. For some reason, she always decides that when I'm recording audio, it is the time to make noise. So, um, as you see here, I'm trimming the clip because I want to take the trimmed portion of this clip into Premiere. Instead of having to deal with the entire clip, let's just take the good stuff. I mean, it's only a minute long clip, but I'm gonna make like a little 20, 20 second sub clip out of it. So as you see, I trim that and I'm gonna export the trim. You see the pro projection here is equa rectangular, meaning if you bring it into Premiere and you leave the projection the same, it's gonna have this, it's gonna look um, almost like a panoramic but it's gonna have some stretching. Okay, so I'm trying to open Premiere here while GoPro Player is exporting. <laughs> and oops, we crashed. Haven't seen that in a long time. So I'm thinking maybe GoPro Player and Premiere, maybe they're both really beefy and that's the reason why it crashed or could just be a fluke, fluke problem. Okay, so now that this clip is done exporting, I'm gonna go ahead and try and open Premiere one more time, but I'm gonna quit the GoPro Player Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start a new project. I'm gonna set it to the same folder as the day of the footage. Okay, so as you see, there's a bunch of different workspaces up here in Premiere. I like to toggle between them. Right now I'm in Assembly. Assembly is the easiest way to just start adding your clips to your project file. Then from here, I right click and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the new sequence from Clip down here. It's just the easiest way. And that's the equa rectangular projection like I was talking about. See how weird it looks? And now I'm going to click on the effects workspace. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to find the GoPro reframing. There's a lot of presets here, but most of these GoPro presets have to do more with uh, the framing size, square, rectangular, uh, resolutions, color grading, 
But what we want, we want the GoPro FX Reframe. That's the one that you download from the website. Does not come with Premiere automatically. So now as you see, uh, I went ahead and I scaled it up. And if you look, here's that pan camera. You can spin it around 360 degrees or more, depending how dizzy you want to get. We got tilt. We got zoom. And I need to shave my beard there, as you can see. Okay, there we go. Now it's kind of looking cool. Now, between using the GoPro app for the editing and using Premiere for editing, I think personally setting the keyframes in Premiere is probably going to be a lot easier if you want to do like something that's super intricate where the camera is making multiple angle changes. Um, you can get in here and be really precise. I've worked in the GoPro player moving the camera around and stuff and setting keyframes and I think you know if you're moving the camera once or twice you know it might be easiest to do it in the GoPro player but I feel like if you're gonna move it more than two times you're probably gonna want to do it in Premiere and that's just my personal opinion I've been working with Premiere for about 20 years now so um, 20 years versus two months of the GoPro player I definitely feel more comfortable with Premiere so I'm really stoked that they have this GoPro reframing preset so you can just do it easily in your preferred workspace. So right now I'm messing with the scale because what if I want to bring that equirectangular view back? Um, doesn't have anything to do with the scale. I'm kind of messing around with this here. As you see, I'm highlighting the keyframes. And I think what it actually has to do with is the projection. You see how the projection, we're gonna set a keyframe on the projection and see how that changes the footage. So when we turned on GoPro reframe, it went ahead and set it to GoPro HD uh, 16 by nine. But if I go ahead and move it back to source image, when it's, when it's at source image, it's going to do the equirectangular again. Also keep in mind, depending on the composition size of this sequence, it's going to depend on which setting you're going to have to have the projection set as to get the equirectangular. So if it's you know a 4 by 3 you might have to put it on a different projection setting to get the equirectangular and vice versa. If it's equirectangular, the, the sequence, then you might have to change it to a different setting uh, if you want it to look regular, if that makes sense. But for, uh, for the sake of this video, when I created the clip, I just went ahead and created a sub-clip from the video settings. So... Uh, the projection defaulted as equirectangular, and then what it does is it, it flattens it out when I go ahead and put it in GoPro HD 16 by 9. Okay, so as you can see, I'm riding the wave. I still have not mastered getting all the water dots off the camera. I've tried multiple things. I've tried uh, the rain -X. I've tried licking it with my tongue. Um, I've tried tons of different stuff to try to get those pesky little water beads off the camera lens. And it seems like nothing truly works. Part of it is is because I have the camera out of the water when I'm paddling and I've created this little contraption, uh, a mouthpiece contraption that goes with the screw um, so I can hang it outside my mouth while I'm paddling because you don't want to get wax on the lens. That's, that's a, a game, game over for that filming session. 
All right. So here's another look at it. Pretty cool. Now I'm just going to go up and export the media. Command M is the quick one. If you look at these presets, high bit rate, medium bit rate, just make sure that you set whatever preset towards whatever media you're using. If you're doing social media, you probably only need a medium bit rate. Um, if you're doing to like a TV screen or something, you're going to want a higher bit rate. Alrighty, well thank you for watching today. I hope you learned something from the video. Put a comment in the bottom if you have any questions. You want me to do a video on something else, I'd be happy to share. Thanks for tuning in. God bless and take care.